Abraham. And we don't need to be bringing God our leftovers. You all may be, you all may be seated. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 through 12. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. This is the Lord talking, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And the Lord is saying, It's plainly here you have robbed him in tithes and in offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Everybody say, This whole nation. You know, we're guilty of, of uh, holding back one way or the other. Maybe we're guilty with our time. We could have been out there door knocking. We could have been uh, doing something, um, you know, handing out a, a homemade tortillas, handing out something to, to the needy, blessing the, the leaders, blessing the, the new converts. We could have, sometimes we're stingy with our time and our things. We could do a little more if you think about it. The word of God says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me. Somebody say, prove me. Now herewith saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord is calling us out. He's challenging us. He's saying, prove me and see what happens. You know, I, I double dog dare you. He, he's saying, if you, if you give your first fruits, you pay your tithes, offerings, you're faithful to the house of God, and... Prove him and see what happens. Prove him and see if he doesn't bless you. And it says, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, everybody say blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devour for your sakes, and ye shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruits before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. Somebody say blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Sometimes we say, where's my blessing? Um, and the Lord is saying, prove me and see. You know, I, uh, I learned, I, I think, the hard way not to, not to expect or demand anything from God. Because it seems like he'll put me through a trial or patience or something else. I'll, I'll end up learning a, a lesson, which is good. But uh, I learned not to charge God foolishly. And where's, where's my blessing? Come on, Lord, I've done this, that, and the other. Where's my blessing? So I kind of hold back on that thought and uh, that mode of operation when it comes to the Lord. Because I know my Father will bless me. He always comes through, amen. Somebody say, he always comes through. You know, Job never charged God foolishly. And I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty. You know, maybe you slacked off here or there or whatever. So this is not a guilt trip. This is a, this is, he is the reason for the season, amen. We, we want to bless him. And if you can't bless him with your tithes and offerings, whatever the case is, this is not a guilt trip about that. This is just a mindset that we want to give God our best, Amen. We don't want to come in here, oh, I'm, I'm sick, I got a cold, oh, I can't raise my hands, just uh, look at me, I'll cough for you, I'll sneeze all over you, whatever the case is. And we're all sick, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, uh, I'm sick too, so. But we want to put that stuff to the side and be a blessing to God, amen. We want to give him our first fruits, we want to give him our best, amen, because he deserves it, right? And Job uh, chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 says, And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So you, you've taken, you give away. Uh, sometimes you bless, but either way, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. That's the mindset. I'm looking at this morning. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And that's, that, that's a big statement. He did not charge God foolishly. Um, and that's where we don't want to tread on that shaky ground. We don't want to call God out. Amen. We don't want to charge God foolishly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not. All the stuff he went through. 
Everything he went through boils, losing his family, losing his livestock, losing his money. Everything he went through, he never charged God foolishly. And he didn't sin and just tell God off and say, you know, okay, here you go, Lord. I hate you. I can't believe you did this to me after all I've done for you. If you, if you haven't read the story of Job, please take some time to do that. It's a, it's a very interesting story. Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Oh, here's my pigeons. Look what I'm doing. Everybody look. Watch what I'm doing. And have all the lights and your hazards on and pulling over to make sure everybody sees you. So we, wanna, we don't want to be all braggadocious. We don't want to be showing off and saying, look what I'm doing and trying to get credit. Um, that's not what God is looking for. So here, here's my pigeons, Lord. Look at me. Look what I'm doing, guys. Look how much I gave. Look how much I'm doing. Uh, here's a 20. Love me plenty. And everybody else giving a dollar, but I'm giving 20s. So we're not trying to show off. We're not trying to make a parade out of it, if you will. Um, reading on, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But look what I did, Lord. Where's my reward? And, you know, sometimes, are you asleep, Lord? Are, are you on vacation? Didn't you see all that I've been doing? I've been faithful. I've been doing this. And we give him our whole list of everything we've been doing. And wondering where the Lord is on this. Lord, are you still there? Are you in Hawaii soaking your feet? Are you in the Bahamas still in your pajamas? Wake up, Lord. I, I'm here. I need your blessing. We don't want to pick on God that way, amen. That's kind of scary when we go there. So, but when thou doest alms, the word says, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Just give. You want to sponsor a youth? Just give. You don't have to make a big old parade out of it. You want to uh, do something for the church? Um, just do it. You don't have to. You don't have to announce it all over and 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 wear your Burger King hat and put it on Facebook. Just do it. And and I'm not picking on anybody or anything like that. But I'm just saying the attitude and the behavior. Thine alms may be in secret, the word of God says, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Openly. So when we do something, we don't say, oh man, uh, this is really going to cost me, this is really going to hurt, and I hope pastor realizes that I'm giving this 20 and I could have been doing this and I could have been doing that and uh, I think I need to let him know what I'm doing and uh, the sacrifice I'm making. But do it in secret. You know, drop it in there. You see a, a missionary come through, an evangelist come through. Um, drop them a 20 if you have it. You know, put a 10, put a 5 in their, in their pouch. However you can help them. Imagine them um, having to go from town to town um, asking for, for, um, for money so they can get back home, asking for motel rooms, a place to stay. Bless them. If you have a little $100 bill... Fold it up and shake their hand and give it to them and put it in their pocket. Whatever the case is, bless the ministry, amen. Bless the, the ministers that come through here. Give them a blessing. Bust out the spam. You know, Jesus is worthy of our best, amen. Our best dress, our best praise, our best worship. You know, we need to sport it like a brand new pair of shoes. You see guys coming in here with their brand new shoes and... They can't wait for everybody to notice them. Look at my shoes. Watch me praise. Watch me dance. It's okay. God blessed them with a brand new pair of shoes. Whatever the case is, that's fine. But we need to, we need to bless him the same way. Same way you're, you're happy about your toys. Same way you're happy about your home or your cars, whatever the case is. You wash it. You scrub it. And it makes it look nice and pretty. 
that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But come in here and shine up the Lord. Amen. Shine up your praises. Shine up your worship. Uh, we love you, Lord. You're worthy of our best. You're worthy of our highest praise, Lord. I thank you and I love you, Jesus. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Clap like it hurts. Clap like you want to pound, bust that devil's eardrums, because he is worthy, amen. We are clapping unto you. We're giving you an offering of praise, Lord. Love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So no matter what you're going through, don't fret. Be happy with you have with what you have. And if you need something else, God's already working it out. He's already, it's already in the works. He knows your needs. Maybe he'll say yes, maybe he'll say no, maybe he'll say wait, whatever the case is. But that's that's God's choice, amen. amen. This is Christmas time. He he truly is the reason for the season, amen. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. You know, uh, I think my wife was telling me this morning there was something that said uh, everybody's fighting at the house, everybody's having a misunderstanding, and then it said something like, man, we're sorry, Lord, we, we just ruined your party. We just, uh, it's just a lame party for you. We made it sad for you. This is This is about Jesus, amen. So you get around family, try not to fight with them, just let it go, deal with it another day, shelf it, it ain't going to hurt you to put it on the shelf, let them talk, let them say, you don't always have to defend yourself, amen, you don't always have to be the putting everybody in their place, let some stuff go, it's okay, amen, because he's the reason for the season, amen, keep, keep peace in the family, all that you can, keep peace in the family and, and just let a few things go, it ain't going to hurt to put it off till next week or next month, and God will probably work it out before it comes back again anyways. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and, and myrrh. myrrh. Where's myrrh? Somewhere. Is my name here? Myrrh. You know, what is the best gift we can bring Jesus? Amen. Ourselves. Not our leftovers, but our best, amen? amen? So what sin is keeping us from bringing our best? What would, be st what would stop you from bringing God your best? That same old, same old, you know, you need to wrap that up and put it under the cross and, and just bury it under the blood once and for all, amen? Put a headstone on that grave and... I heard somebody say, dance on that grave. It, you can't hurt me anymore. You know, I, I, I buried that. I buried that a long time ago. Put a headstone on it. Rest in peace. You ain't coming back again. That's it. We found a new love. His name is Jesus. Amen. amen. Somebody say, Jesus. Yeah. Bury that old carcass ten foot under. Pour a slab of cement on there so the dogs and wild coyotes don't dig it up. We need to bring our best to Jesus. Amen ourselves somebody say myself you know confidence somebody say confidence because you are special in, in the lord amen spiritual boldness somebody say boldness i can do all things through christ who strengthens me liberty somebody say liberty we can hold our head high amen because we've been set free thank you jesus setting me free thank you jesus for helping me, amen. Bring him your breast, praise, and worship because we know who we're worshiping, amen. We know who he is. We've got to thank him for revelation and understanding, for opening our blind eyes. Thank you, Lord, for opening my blind eyes, for letting me see this. Finally, I can see this. Finally, I can move on. Finally, I can put that junk down and I can serve you wholeheartedly, amen.
Anybody happy to be in the presence of God? Anybody happy to know Jesus? Anybody happy? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let this season of uh, uh, depression get you down. Don't let this season of, oh, somebody's complaining, they wanted more. Don't, don't let it bring you down. Just shake that off because you can always remind them, well, where's my present? Well, he's the reason for the season. Amen. <laughs> He, he's the reason for this season. It ain't about you. So let's keep our mind on Jesus, amen. Sometimes we want to bring G, uh, the children to the, to the Lord and say, okay, Lord, uh, I lay my children before the altar. They're in your hands. Do what you want with them. Bless them. Uh, they're, they're yours. I give them to you. And then they go and want to get married. Well, not that one, no. Uh-uh, not that idiot. You ain't married. No. How do you know the Lord wanted to turn that idiot around, you know? So just go ahead and repent for that. That's okay. Because we don't know what the Lord wants to do, amen? Uh, we, we see idiots, and he sees <laughs> blessings. He sees souls. He sees uh, musicians. He sees people growing in the church, amen? And we see idiots. So, But, Lord, don't, you know, don't, don't send them to Africa. No, you don't. The Lord's not telling you you have a ministry in Africa. No, that's not what the Lord's telling you. The Lord told me you're going to live next door and you're going to watch me and you're not going to put me in an old folks' home and you're going to take care of me. You're not going to be a missionary. So, you know, we put conditions on our requests. Here, Lord, here's my child, but keep them, keep them close. Keep them here in town. I don't want to drive... You know, 100 miles to see my children. I don't want to. I don't want to drive or, or have them fly. A, you know, 10 hours, 20 hours away. I want my children close to me, Lord. And we put conditions on our prayer requests, and we're supposed to be giving them, giving them to the Lord, Amen. But we always have our little, our little condition in there. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Turn to and say, it works. You know, uh, well, before I was, I was in the world, I wasn't in the church, and my mom was in the church, and she went, and I don't know if it was a ladies' conference or what it was, but uh, something about Sister Shaw was glowing, and I guess my mom went and told her, uh, can you pray for my son? So all that time she was praying, she didn't know who she was praying for until, you know, a year later, she saw my mom come in the church, and she said, oh, that's your mom. You know, she told me to pray for you. So prayer works. You know, uh, be diligent about it. Be sincere. It works. Amen. And Sister Shaw told me, I've been pr I was praying for you. I didn't know you were the one I was praying for. That's pretty cool. So um, raise your hand if you like spam. I got a treat for you today. <laughs> Brother Alex likes spam. Okay. Raise your hand again. I can't see it. Okay, Sister Ella. Who's that over there? It's Noberto. Okay, you guys want to volunteer? You want to earn a? You want to earn your spam? I got a little something for you. You're gonna like it. It's gonna be worth it. Okay. So I need one more person to come up here and hold this real quick. Somebody like spam? Can't look at this yet. You giving up your spot, Sister Noberto? Okay, Sister Hannah, you want to come up here real quick? All shy. You want to come up here, son? What's your name? Antonio. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, prize. <laughs> so, what does the paper say? Go turn off the fans on and off. Um, shake three people's hands. Come back, speak into a microphone, any microphone. Uh, look at the AV department camera, tell Pastor, I love you, Pastor, and I want to be used of God. 
One, two, three, go. Any order, don't matter. I love you, Pastor, and I want to be used of God. I love you, Pastor, and I want to be used of God. I love you, Pastor, and I want to be used of God. Give him a hand clap of praise. Hold on one minute. The shirt belongs to you. You all may be seated. Oh, you guys can take your can of spam, sister. Nancy, Brother Antonio, come get your can of Spam or green beans, whatever one you want. Get a choice. Give him a hand clap of appreciation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So this one's yours, Sister Ella. You're the first one. You beat him. So let's give her a hand clap of appreciation. <laughs> so supernatural, powerful, anointed ministry. That's what we're looking for, amen? So it could mean um, uh, study, pray, availability, meditate. So there was a couple of things I was going with this morning. There's a special processed American meathead. I have that one. And I am not a spam person. I don't even want to tell you the other one I was going to say. But I guess I will. Spoiled pizza, awful meatloaf. I don't do spam unless it's really thin and burnt to a crisp. Then I'll, I'll eat it. But otherwise, I just can't, I don't know, I just can't do spam. I throw some mutton on there, I'm okay with mutton. I have no problem with that. So we love you, Pastor. Uh, they want to be used by you. And so does everybody else in the church, amen. So we need to grow. We need to get to that place. Our winner on her chicken dinner. We went out, uh, Sister Amanda, is she in here this morning? She's in youth class. She had a vision to go door knocking and to uh, feed the people that we door knocked to. We had pastor's permission. We told Brother Mike the clerk. Um, the youth are the youth, so they, they can do their own little ministries on the side. Um, but it was a blessing. She, The Lord told her, to go do this, and the shyest girl in town got up and put it together, amen. She, she said, we got we to gotta have a Bible study, we got to go door knocking, we got to feed them. And she made it happen, real quietly, but she made it happen, amen. So give Sister Amanda a hand clap, appreciation. Sister Trish was out there in the cold on her birthday, and we're going to sing happy birthday to you in a while, sis. So let's give her a hand clap of appreciation. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Nations had knocked her. She here this morning, and uh, she was kind of scared, and she got up there, and she knocked, and she handed out flyers, handed out cards. We had some folks come in. We fed them chicken dinner, thanks to Brother Baldonado, supplied uh, a whole box of chicken so we fed them good everybody ate good we gave them a bible study and sent them on their way they said they'll come back on wednesday night and worship and praise with us so that's that's awesome amen and some of the other people said they would show up they're busy now for the holidays but um god's word does not come back void amen so let's give sister amanda and all the ones that came and helped thank you jesus thank you lord who am i missing who else went with Oh, Sister Rochelle, where is she? She's out too. Sister Rachel. Somebody called her. So the same God that healed the lepers is the same God we serve today, amen? And he wants us to go out and do likewise. He wants us to be on fire. He wants us to, to get, a, get in a ministry. Get involved in a ministry, amen? Get fired up. Do something. Help out. Pitch in no matter what it is. Um. 
Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Say amen when you're there. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Somebody say, heal the sick. Somebody say, cleanse the lepers. Somebody say, raise the dead. Somebody say, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. God gave that to you freely. He, he blessed you freely, amen. So don't hold back if somebody needs a prayer, somebody needs a blessing. Don't hold back. Put, lay your hands on them and pray for them right there and there. You don't have to say, well, come to church, we'll pray for you. They're, they're right there at Walmart. Put your hands over the counter. What are they going to do, throw you out? and Pray that headache away, amen. So we don't have to wait. You, you have the fire. You, you have the blessings. You have God's blessing upon you, amen. 1 John chapter 4, 11 through 13. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Somebody say, love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Somebody say, God dwelleth in me. Turn around, shake somebody's hand, and say, God dwelleth in you also. Turn around, shake somebody's hand. Tell Merry Christmas. This is about this is about Christ, Amen. And we should be merry. We should be happy about it. We are we are God's cho chosen children, Amen. We should be happy. We should be the happiest in town. We should be the happiest saints in town, Amen. Because we know Him in a in a personal, deep way, Amen. And that's awesome. We should be excited about that. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us the spirit. So when we love one another, it's a testimony that God lives in us. We don't need to be fighting and bickering. You have a ministry, focus on your ministry. My ministry is not to sit here and pick on all your ministries. You know what I mean? You have a ministry, focus on your ministry. Don't worry about what the next guy is doing. Spread the love. Be ye kind to one another. You know, it's, it's evident that God is in our lives. Just when you turned around and said Merry Christmas, you could just see the joy. You could just see the happiness on you. That's awesome. It's awesome to be in a Holy Ghost atmosphere, amen. It's awesome to be, to be a, a part, of, part of this church, a part of God's, God's body. In that type of atmosphere, anything can happen. You're sick, you need prayer, you need a healing. We're going to ask you to come up in a while um, after the song service. And you need a healing, you need a prayer, well, we'll pray for you, amen. And, and we're not healing you, but God is healing you, amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. You know, we could hear the chains falling. You could hear them. You could just, you could just hear something's going to happen. We're in the presence of God. He died for us. This is his season. Anything can happen with that. Amen. So when it's time for the altars, it's time to praise God. Just worship him with all your heart. Just love him with all your heart. Come in in faith, believing that he's going to heal you and he's going to bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If we have to repent, there's a hang up. There's something that's holding you back from bringing your best. We don't have to die in our sins. We don't have to die that way, amen. We can come clean before God. Forgive me, Lord. Help me. Don't hang on to it. Don't carry it around. Don't wait till next service. You can, you can let go of it today, amen. We don't have to go home and die in our sins. We need to let go of the junk, repent, give it to God, and let him bless us, amen. Spam spelled backwards is maps. Allow the word of God to guide you. Get your orders from headquarters. Follow the plan. Follow the man of God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for our pastor. He lays it out before us. He has a plan. He lays it out. 
The Lord gives him a map, and we follow him, amen? We need to, we need to follow that. It's okay to be a little eccentric. Uh, I, was, I don't know if I was daydreaming in the third heaven. I don't know if I was sleeping. But Kyra and Bianca were saying, the word's eccentric, Dad. I got up. Eccentric? What is that? So I had to look it up. Outlandish. It's okay to be a little odd. It's okay to be a little eccentric. I don't know why they were both telling me, Dad, the word's eccentric. And I was like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm asleep here. So the word of the day is eccentric when I woke up the other morning. On the other hand, uh, let's say God blesses us with revelation and knowledge and we're really getting up there and we're just hyper spiritual. We're really getting a hold of God and nobody else can get what we're getting and it's just awesome and God is moving on us. And then here comes a new convert that we're teaching a Bible study to. Let's not dump everything on the new convert. They're not ready for strong meat. They're not ready for that yet. Try to have control. You don't have to stuff all this uh, wisdom and knowledge and revelation to them in one serving, amen? Sometimes they need that sincere milk. Hold back. Hold yourself back. It's like unloading a big old truck full of stuff, and they're way down there, and it don't match, and you're just dumping all that on them. Don't, don't overkill them, amen? Don't overkill. Somebody say overkill. They're not able to digest it yet. Just hold back a little bit. God will give you that control. Feed them a little bit at a time. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Amen. In due time, they'll get it. In due time, the light bulb will come on. But let's not, let's not, uh, they say let's not dress the fish before we catch it. Put your little bait out there. Them, bring them in. You don't have to dress them all up and tell them everything. The, that's God's passion. Amen. It's them with compassion. Somebody say compassion. Thank you, Jesus. And a little bit more time. Acts 1 and 8. Somebody say power. Thank you, Jesus. Supernatural, powerful, anointed ministry. But ye shall receive power, and I don't have a whole lot of time to preach the whole message, so. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So raise your hand if you have the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost, have it speaking in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. So you have the power, amen? When, when, you, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So you have power to lay hands on the sick, to raise the dead, to uh, heal cancer. You have that power already. Now you just got to tap into it and believe and have faith and pass it on, amen? Freely you were given, freely give. Freely received, freely give. Give it. This is a spirit of giving, amen. Don't hold back that power. Don't hold back that blessing because you already have it. God gave that to you. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So be a witness wherever you're at. Back in the hills, nobody else can get there. Be a witness. Tell them about Jesus. Lay hands on them. Pray for them. If you want authority over the attacks that are coming your way, then be willing to sit under authority, amen. You know, guys can't even get up and throw the trash, but you want to pray demons away. Do your manly duties. Throw the trash. It's not a big deal, amen? <laughs> We're not trying to beat up the guys. You know, some women don't wake up and say, I want to be a plumber. I can't wait to go clean that toilet and scrub that toilet and unplug that toilet. and uh, I just... You don't see very many women wanting to be plumbers. Maybe there are. I, I don't see them. When I see the trucks going by, I see mostly guys. Some jobs we have to do, guys. Amen? Some greasy jobs, uh, the stove, the oven, the nasty jobs, the, that pan won't come clean for her. You know? Chip away at it. Help her out. Amen? She's not your maid. Pitch in. Help her out. Amen. We want we want to... We, 
we want a supernatural, powerful, anointed ministry, but we have to do the little things. We have to be faithful in the little things, amen? So, you know, my, my drill sergeant, you say, I, I want to be able to eat cereal out of that toilet bowl. Ew, I know. In other words, it better be clean when he walks in there. He walks in there for inspection. That toilet better be clean. And uh, so I don't have a problem. Ever since I met my wife, she'd go in the shower or whatever, and, and I would make the bed, right? I've made the bed uh, all the time. Make your bed. It's not that hard. Pick up your stuff. You know, do, do the tough stuff. Do the nasty things. It's okay. Man up. Be a man. Step up. That's what God designed us to do. Lead, amen. Protect our home. Be leaders. Ladies, don't kill them over it. Send him to men's retreat. They'll, they'll groom him. They'll shape him up over there. They'll mold him over there. Somebody else could yell at him and tell him to, to do it. They have men's retreat. Send him. They're, they're going to they're gonna help him. Amen. Men, send your ladies to, to ladies' retreat. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So, you don't have to be worrying so much about everything. Worrying about this, worrying about that. God did not give you the spirit of worrying and fear, amen. Somebody say power. Somebody say love. Somebody say of a sound mind. That's what God gave you. He didn't give you all worrying and doubt and hate, things like that. He gave you the power uh, uh not of fear, the spirit of fear, but of the power of, and of love and of a sound mind. We can, we can do this. We can be positive. We don't have to doubt and worry all the time, amen? If you have the Holy Ghost, you receive the power. You receive the fruits of the spirit, love and a sound mind. Spam. She's got her little T-shirt. Bam. Supernatural, powerful, anointed ministry. They should be coming in any minute from the, good to see everybody here, the Bucks back there, good to see you all, in Jesus name. So they'll be coming in now, uh, Matthew 25, 42 through 45, can we all just stand, stretch our legs, good to see you Jaquise, appreciate you. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you gave me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they answer him, Lord, Lord, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and a thirst, or stranger, or naked, and sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? You know, we we want to we want to bless the the leaders uh, or the pastor, but somebody out there, we, we don't really know them. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to the one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Somebody say, ouch. So let's not be critical. Let's not be judgmental. Let's show love. Let's be a blessing. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of appreciation. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Teach us to show love, Lord. We need you. We love you.